Hi, uh, today's talk is, are coffee and tea good for you? Well, first of all, the most important thing is they both have caffeine. And I'm always amazed at how many people tell me they love coffee, they love tea, how wonderful it is. And then you ask them, you know, what's the relationship of caffeine to the stress response? Basically, caffeine is an equivalent to the stress response. When somebody has psychological stress, and nobody likes excessive psychological stress, these hormones are increased, cortisol and the catecholamines. Catecholamines are epinephrine, which is same as adrenaline, and norepinephrine, which is same as noradrenaline. So basically, you're increasing your stress level when you drink caffeine. My recommendation, no caffeine. And there's a good reason why. Cortisol is basically like a triage uh, commander of the acute stress response. Acute stress response is remembered by all medical students as being chased by a tiger in the dark. So if you're being chased by a tiger in the dark, all that matters is to survive for the next 15 minutes, the next five minutes, to run in your house, lock the door and hope the tiger doesn't get in, to climb a tree. Um, so you need to maximize the amount of blood glucose. If you didn't have cortisol, you wouldn't be able to increase your blood glucose fast enough and your, as well as your catecholamines increase your blood glucose. So the liver is going to be breaking down glycogen as fast as it can to release it into the blood. It's going to start running lots of gluconeogenesis to be able to push glucose out into the blood for maximal physical uh, energy. And because of that, you're going to have a big upswing in your blood glucose. You're also going to be uh, breaking down fat to send those to other areas for metabolism, to save the glucose for your muscles, for your brain. So. If you have diabetes, high levels of cortisol and stress will increase insulin resistance and will worsen diabetes. It will also cause less ability to sleep. These hormones are going to increase your alertness level. So cortisol is sort of the opposite of melatonin, the hormone that helps you to sleep. You can think of them as a seesaw. When cortisol is high, melatonin is low and vice versa. Cortisol also will induce some anxiety. It increases the release of glutamate, the excitatory neurotransmitter in the hippocampus. So cortisol is sort of the opposite of oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love hormone. You feel safe, you know, when baby's with mama, baby feels free to play and explore the environment. Okay, it will increase blood pressure. It has a bit of a mineralocorticoid activity whereby it causes sodium retention in the kidney, increasing the body's intravascular volume, and that'll contribute to raising blood pressure. It also causes some loss of bone material from the spine and other bones, so it promotes osteoporosis. You ask any woman, she doesn't want osteoporosis. She doesn't want to be fat, obesity. She doesn't want her cortisol level increased, but that's what her um, cholesterol level increased, but that's what cortisol does. It contributes to being hypertensive, diabetic, osteoporotic, and also fat. It especially promotes big belly, central obesity, as well as a buffalo hump on the back, it's called fat accumulating right in the back at the bottom of the neck there. Um, another thing, what I think is a big deal, is it increases fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a blood clotting protein. It sticks red blood cells together. It's called a bridging molecule. And you don't want that. It increases your risk of myocardial infarction. Uh, increases factor eight clotting factor, antihemophilic factor. It increases platelet activation. And activated platelets are more prone to forming clots. And that is not good. You don't want to be forming clots unless you have active bleeding. You know, theoretically, if you got scratched by a tiger and you bled, you'd be able to clot off the bleeding site faster. But when it's just psychological stress or from drinking caffeine, you don't want to be hypercoagulable. The reason people die is because they get a myocardial infarction with an artery clots off. The reason they have a stroke is they have a clotted artery in the brain. So you don't want unnecessary clotting. Um, in addition, the platelets that are activated, they have an ability sometimes to shield cancer cells from the immune system. So chronically activated platelets and being stressed with caffeine and lack of sleep, sleep deprivation also is perceived as stress and increases these same hormones. It increases the risk of cancer spreading, metastatic cancer. The other hormones that are elevated are the catecholamines as we spoke about a moment ago. One of the things they do is they function as siderophore, meaning that they can transfer iron from the human body to bacteria. So they increase your risk of a dormant bacteria becoming activated and having a clinically significant infection. Uh, so they, in a sense, they immunosuppress you to some extent. They also increase your blood pressure, increase your heart rate. So the bottom line is my recommendation, 
I don't drink any coffee or tea at all, not one drop. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I've known some athletes when they're going for their one rep maximum, they, they like to have a little bit of coffee, but I think it's a bad habit to drink it on a routine basis. I did drink it for about 14 years and then I was real glad that I quit. In order to quit, what I did was I dropped the first cup by 25% the first day, then by 50%, then by 75% and then to nothing. That took four days and then um, I had cravings for about another two weeks before I finally felt back to my normal self. And I did feel sad for about three days after quitting the coffee. You know, I had you know, deprivation of those hormones that I was used to. Uh, but once I was done with it, I was glad. My energy came back to its usual way and my mood came back to its usual way and I was really glad to be done with the coffee because you're kind of trapped by it. You always have to have it at the same time you get a withdrawal headache. I was really glad to be not bothered by that, distracted by that. Okay, what else? It's also, who knows what kind of pesticides it's sprayed with. I did have an organic type but even then I wonder. Okay, what about tea? Tea's got additional problems. Tea has a tendency to concentrate aluminum. Aluminum is a neurotoxic substance. You don't want to be in drinking that. It also has a tendency to concentrate fluoride. Fluoride is also potentially neurotoxic when you're drinking it. It's been shown to lower IQ. Um, it might increase lead. I don't know how many brands do that. This guy, Mike Adams, is a scientist who tests food and he claims that some teas have that. So I don't really know which ones have that. That might be a rare thing. But the bottom line is there's a lot of negatives. You know, these are billion dollar industries. They're gonna have lots of advertising, but if you look at the, the hormones that are increased by these things, and I've read books on the subject, I don't think you can win, the, win with this stuff. I recommend avoiding it. That's it.